Hey, well, welcome. I'm Jeff. Why am I so bad at starting podcasts? Why is this so bad? I've been doing this professionally for so long. It's But hey, it's Jeff Has Cool Friends. It's another episode of Jeff Has Cool Friends. I am Jeff May, and I have cool friends, and I am very, very, very excited. You have no idea how excited I am uh, to have my next guest on, my very cool friend, uh, and also my neighbor, uh, the architect of my teenage years accidentally, um, just a person who has made my life exponentially better without even knowing it, um, the creator and founder of Spooky World, entrepreneur, producer, all around good guy to know and fantastically cool friend, David Bertolino. David, hi. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to Jeff Has Cool Friends. <laughs> I Well, it's so funny. We, we have such a fascinating um, meet. Uh, the way we met is so so very interesting. Um, a couple of years ago, I was on a run, and I was at the end of my run. I was just at the end of my run, uh, right at the. I'm like one street away from from me, and I see somebody you having a yard sale, and I love yard sales. So I came back, and you had all these like amazing movie posters, just. Thousands, it seemed like thousands of movie posters. Is that about right? I'd say so, yes. <laughs> it, was, it, was, quite, it was quite a collection. And it was movie posters. It was sporting events. It, it was it, You had amassed such a collection. And one of the ones that was there was Tyson versus uh, Hurricane Peter McNeely. It was Tyson's first fight out of prison. And I said, oh, I was like, I remember the people around me were always obsessed with this fight because this guy was from uh, where I'm from, in, uh, I'm from Massachusetts. And you were like, what part? You remember this, Exactly, right? yes, and, that's right. And I was like, I'm from the Worcester area. And you said... Worcester? Yeah, I'm like, very familiar with Worcester. <laughs> have you ever heard of Spooky World? And I was... <laughs> you, said, you said, have you ever heard of Spooky World? And I was like, uh, yeah, like, of course. It was my childhood. And then you were like, I, I did that. <laughs> you were just, I'm, I'm spooky Dave. You, you were like, yeah, that was my, and, and I, I reacted. And the best way I could describe it was I reacted like Elaine from Seinfeld when she would say, shut up and push. I, I said, I said, shut the f up. I, like I, I was so instinctively blown away. I was like, no way. I was like, how could, how dare you lie about something this important to me? And, and I, I was, it was Mm. It was like meeting a celebrity, like a secret celebrity almost. Something that's because you created something that was so big to me that I couldn't actually fathom that someone had created it. It seems to me like as a kid, Spooky World, which we're going to talk about, it was like it, it, it grew from a seed or, or something. It was this natural thing that we would have as a kid. And I became, I was like, sing, I sang the song. That's right. Yeah, you did. I you did. You sang the jingle and that haunted people every day it still yeah. haunts us and i'll tell you why because anybody who is from the new england area if you grew up in the 90s you would absolutely remember and it would trigger uh, the response of is america's horror theme park spooky world that's it if i went to if i went to anywhere in massachusetts if i went to any random bar in worcester <laughs> and i just yelled it's America's horror theme park. <laughs> I can get guarantee you that at least a hundred people would come back with spooky they, they, world. They, they completed exactly. Yeah, yeah. it's it, it is such a an unfathomably important part of my childhood. Nice, great to hear. And uh, and you you know you were talking to me about you know oh yeah like I did this and you showed me your the stash and you you sent me home with a couple of spooky world posters. Yes, that's right. And. My girlfriend was also, uh, she also is uh, from the New England area. And I was like, you are never going to guess who my neighbor is in a way. <laughs> and, I, and she started to break down for me. She was like, oh my God, oh my God, are you kidding me? Um, because she never got to go. Because she was from the North Shore. Right. And it was a bit more of a trek for sure, her. Sure, sure. Um, spooky World. Yes. So describe it to the people that, I'm just saying this is a thing, but if, if you could describe it to... Uh, to the listeners, what what exactly was Spooky you World? You know, the elevator pitch is, you know, here is a former, you know, dairy farm um, that was converted into what later became the number one Halloween attraction in the world. It was just designed to uh, keep me busy in the fall season uh, when my, that, my other job was in hiatus. Just the fall season, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then it turned out to be, you know, 
seven days a week. I mean, it was phenomenal. I mean, we worked, you know, probably three months solid of, you know, 12 hour days, seven days a week. But the other nine months, you know, we just worked a, a regular, you know, I, I was time actually, period. I was actually wondering about that because Spooky World was, it started out because, uh, spoiler alert, and we can talk about this in a bit, but the, there's a documentary um, coming out called Spooktacular. That's right. Yes. Um, with some amazing uh, interviews on there and talking heads. And yeah. I'm not, yeah. I'm not well, bragging let, here. Let, but. Let, me, let me jump in. I'll tell you w- one of the things that made me go along with this film crew for three years of following me around and then working in, I think we did about 90 interviews, probably only about 20 or 30 are in the, uh, are in the film. But, uh, you know, the, the, the director, Quinn Monaghan, pitched me the idea. He loved my stories, and we were neighbors uh, when I first moved to California from Boston. And what clinched the deal was you know, Cindy and I watching uh, Seth Meyers. You know, he had John Krasinski on as a guest. John Krasinski from The Office and That's uh, right. Jack Ryan. Quiet Place. And Quiet Place, yeah. And so uh, Seth asked him, you know, fellow New Englander, what are your fondest childhood memories? And he said, my favorite memories as a kid was going to Spooky World theme park in Berlin, Massachusetts. I was blown over when I watched that. that that's got to be so... I mean, it's like, what? And, and they actually went into a second segment talking all about his experiences, what he, you know, what he enjoyed there and little you know, side stories yeah. about it. So I called the director the next day and I said, I'm in. Yeah. I'll, I'll go along with this documentary. You're like, okay, yeah. Uh, if we, you know, it, if you, this guy found it that interesting, maybe it is. Well, it is. Well, and also over almost two million people have, you know, yeah, so agreed. It, so, I mean, because it, it's it's very interesting. And, and, and you know, I can essentially, we can I can summarize the, the sort of thesis statement of the documentary, which I have seen, sure. by the way. And also I'm in. Which is, yes, you are. Which is really fun. Yes, um, but um, it really comes down to is the middle of, and I hate to say this because it is my home, but it's central Massachusetts is kind of the middle of nowhere. Worcester, Massachusetts is a ugly medium city that I love with all, every focus and central point of my heart. Sure. Um, but there, there's not much. Right. We, we didn't have anything. We weren't Boston. You know, we weren't even. You know, what, what, what Springfield has like the N, the NBA Hall of the Basketball sure. Hall of Fame, but that's, I mean, what we had nothing, and especially if you're a kid, you would go to you know uh, that's entertainment, uh, which I ended up working at the comic shop. That was a big deal. Oh sure, and, yeah. and the Halloween outlet next to it. Oh yeah, yeah, on Park, yeah, uh, on Park Ave before they moved. Sure, but we had nothing, and I, I mean, Spooky World, from what I understand, it started in 1991. 1991. That's okay, right. So I am uh, nine, going on ten. Okay. Wow. Okay. Perfect. To find this out, I, I'm not. We're not going when I'm that age, specifically because my parents. We we did not have the money to be like, all right. And it wasn't. You know, 1991. It wasn't really in the purview, and we were still sort of secluded. Sure. In Charlton, where sure. I was from. Yeah. Yeah. But then as I'm getting older, and now we start seeing all the ads and the, the ads, billboards the- and. TV commercials, the, the celebrity endorsements. And you made very, whoever you chose to be your advertising, whoever was the person that did the advertising, it hit the right targets because you were hitting that young. Because I was watching, like, I'd see those commercials on, like, Fox Saturday mornings when I was watching the X Men cartoon or sure. something. And you'd see a Spooky World commercial and you'd be like, I got to get there. Right, right. So it exactly. wasn't, I think the first time I went, to, I was about. 15 so it would have been around 1996 sure yeah because i have an october birthday Uh uh-huh okay great so that would be like sometimes we would just get to go so it was sort of the architect of my mid to to final teens that i got to enjoy this which is Uh perfect right and you were uh, you know you're stunned i mean you were at that point probably watching some horror movies Oh, yeah. You were getting into it. Yeah. And you're walking through these haunted attractions that were, you know, pretty highly themed. And you walk through, you know, a Freddy Krueger set. And you're walking out, and there is Robert England. Yeah. Greeting you, shaking your hand, taking a picture with you. I mean, that's Mecca for any kid it's, 15 years old. So my friend Tim, uh, my like, because I'm, I'm medium on horror. 
Like I, I like it, but I, I like a lot of like the John Carpenter stuff. But sure. I, I don't. I'm not one of these like getting slashing gore, getting right. old. Like you know, yeah. like I couldn't watch the Saw movies. Right, right. right. Those are biology lessons. Yeah, yeah. the early stuff that that we emulated, copycatted. Yeah, worked so well. See, you're you're Toby Hooper and Wes Craven and mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Uh, so my friend Tim was a huge horror nerd. He still has. Like the signed photos of the people that he met That's great. at Spooky World. Yeah. He, he's got he's got his man cave, and, right. I, and I still go down there, and it's just wall to wall, just toys and, and games and, you and know, autographs. We purposely rotated the celebrities every weekend. We changed and added three or four new celebrities. Yeah. So if a true fan would come every weekend in October. Did you get um, celebrities uh, the first year? Oh well, yeah, the yeah. first year we had uh, Kane Hodder. Who's Jason? Uh, right? You're right. Gunnar Hansen, Leatherface, Leatherface, Texas yeah. Chainsaw Massacre, and Butch Patrick. Oh, uh, Eddie Munster. Right. Yeah. And then uh, an additional celebrity, Tom Savini, was brought on for a limited amount of time. But I got to tell you something. He was the biggest inspiration of my life tied to Spooky World. Well, he he helped. Right, well, he helped right? design, lay out some of the attractions on the, the Hayride Trail. And Tom Savini, for those of you that don't know, uh, just a special effects wizard. I mean, he worked on, uh, he did the Friday the 13th, I believe, the first Friday right. the 13th. He, he and, created Jason. Yeah. yeah. And we also, uh, the... the Oh, know, the, yeah, the, Night of the Living the, Dead. Yeah. He did Creep the, Show. He, yeah, yeah, the reboots and all that stuff. And sure. just a, a legend. Yeah, absolutely. A, a, an absolute legend. I, I, I ran into him at um, Monster Palooza. Sure. And, and told him, I was like, you know... I was like, my neighbor is David Bertolino. And he was like, ah, oh, and he like lit up. <laughs> and I was like, thank you. Like, I, I, I know the story and I, I love this. It's so great. Yeah. So it, it is funny now. I think it's so great that, and, and especially at that time, that horror fandom is so important that the architects, that it's not just the stars or the directors that are the celebrities, but the the effects artists and, and the very, you know, when you look at that, you see, you know, Tom Savini, people people will know who that is. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, you know, Tom and I worked together for a long period of years, and uh, there was never a time that, you know, it, it, back then I was 324 pounds, by the way, so I never missed a buffet or a great lunch, breakfast, dinner, or whatever. Yeah. So... You know, I always broke bread with my friends, you know, working at Spooky World. And th- there was never a point that we would w- walk into a restaurant and it, always somebody would come up, recognize Tom, want an autograph. Yeah. And he had this huge following. Oh, and, yeah. and he still does to this day. Mm. I mean, he sells out at all of the conventions he attends. I mean, and Yeah. yeah. Incredible. Phenomenal host. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Just a, a great, a great talent. So, so Savini is there with you. Helping you build this thing. It's 1991. You're in the middle of nowhere, Berlin, Massachusetts. Exactly. We don't even have the Solomon Pond Mall yet. In That's right. There was there wasn't a it mall. Was, it yeah. was just a pond. Sure. Uh, <laughs> it was just the Solomon Pond. <laughs> yes. So, like, how did it go? Like financially, well, like what, I'm wondering, like how you know, how does that go on the, when you start something like this well, for the first time? Foolishly, we had no idea what we were doing. I mean, we had the mission statement of, hey, let's make this cool hayride. Let's build 22 stage sets. The hay wagons will stop at each of the sets, and there'll be a little vignette, you know, supported by actors, and we'll have some various props and interesting effects at each stop along the way. And uh, my partner and I, Sean Fogarty, figured on paper that we would break even if we did 200 people a night for 31 nights. And that's a very doable number, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. It was, you know, we just we had just enough parking for that. But little did we know <laughs> that we would be doing two thousand people a night. In the first year we did sixty thousand paid attendance. Sixty thousand. Yeah. yeah. So I had this uh it was either a ten or a fifteen year loan and I paid it back in three weeks. Yeah. You so paid the whole loan back. Paid the you know, which prevented uh, the uh, person who we borrowed the dough from uh to be uh an equity partner yeah then it it stayed just a loan that was prepaid off yeah and so um it was disappointing for the person who loaned me the money but you know we were able to 
yeah. not give out equity and uh, ultimately preserve that. And um, it was just a phenomenal success by accident. So, because you, because you had Spooky World, you were the owner of Spooky World. Was it until two thousand five? Uh, 2011. 2011. Yeah. Okay. 2005 yeah. is when it moved? No, no. I think we moved in 2009. Okay. So. Yeah. To Gillette Stadium. Okay. Part of the craft domain. Okay. Yeah. Because I was, so I was there, you know, because I, I, I moved in 2012. So, so you guys ended up moving to um, Gillette Stadium from Berlin, which we right. can, we can talk about that, you know, later in there. Sure. Um, and I, as I was doing my research, I found out Spooky World is still a thing. Yes, you yeah. did. You sold it. I'm. I'm going. I to sold it. It's. Uh, it's been moved to New Hampshire. It is in yeah. New Hampshire, and now. so they still operate. Uh, and um, do you have a good relationship with the people that own it, or you know, is it a little rocky? I, I or? thought I did, uh, yeah. and then when we went to use the name Spooky World, they, you know had some issues so unfortunately you know you have to we change didn't, it to we changed it to spooktacular Which and is, it's a, it's a shame because you know now that we're involved in another entity that's spinning off of this oh, oh okay. uh, and those folks are looking for a place to shoot footage yeah and uh you know, it's, you know, we don't have the relationship yeah. where I can, you know, even they don't want me to even enter the ground. So it's, okay. it's hard. Oh, is to, it that now? Cause well, it just, it got a little strange I mean, I, when it's in a lawyer's hands and they, yeah. they demand money and, you know, well, all kinds you know, of. I guess they did buy the name. Yeah. You, you know, you know what? In all fairness, I uh, pay homage and tribute to them yeah. to keep the name and the, yeah. and the, and the, the inspiration going. I hope I'm it was, disappointed yeah. that I couldn't help their promote their name further and, and get, you know, certain revenue streams that I could offer them that aren't from me, but yeah. from other. I mean, let me just, I, I'm beating around the bush. We have been approached by two major Hollywood producers that are in the TV industry. And uh, we're negotiating now about doing a TV series. A TV series. Tied to the spectacular movie, which would not just be Spooky World, but it would actually start with my entry into the Halloween industry products. Because you started working it, for the Boston costume? It, well, is actually, it, uh, before that, Little Jack Horner Joke Shop, which is from the <laughs> early 50s. Oh, wow. And my dad owned the joke shop in downtown Boston. And okay, we, what's that like? Real well, quick, before I mean, we keep moving, you know, what's it like growing up in a joke oh, shop? Oh, I mean, I you know, Walter Cronkite would come in and I'd sit on a whoopee cushion and d demonstrate it for him. Really? Or you know, rock and roll groups, you know, Rolling Stone members have, have come in and done their shopping. Really? And yeah, various. Yeah, I mean, we were right in the theater district too, so we also provide theater props. Uh, and we had a magic shop that my brother operated on the second floor. So it was quite an entity. Wow. But we were huge in the Halloween industry on a retail I would basis. Think so, yeah. Then we switched to wholesale. Then it went on to uh, starting Boston Costume, which we opened in uh, Chinatown District of much, Boston. That was a much more high end. Oh, yeah. What yeah, very see, upscale yeah. rental store. And then uh, I was. Um, hired by Ruby's Costume as one of their national sales managers. And suddenly I'm selling to Spencer Gifts, Hot Topic, and so oh, yeah, forth. Geez, yeah, geez, you know, like yeah. all the 35 Halloween stores in uh, in Burbank, <laughs> yeah, California. Exactly. So, um, okay, so you, you grow, so you have spent your whole life in this world, so I guess it would make sense that you're like, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something in this world, but I'm going to do something that's mine. Exactly. And so you were like, I, and... From what I understand, and, and the genesis of, of that is you kind of went to a sh haunted hayride and were like, all right, well, we're going to do a good version of this. Is that basic, the best way to describe I, it? I went to one terrible uh, haunted attraction, a, a hayride in Egg Harbor, New Jersey in 1990, looked at it and said, I think I can do this much, much, much better. So that and was like a, a, a less than a year. Essentially, if you're going yeah. to this event in 1990 and right. you're already having the the your spot launch in 91. You know, Jeff, the stars were aligned. We, I was looking for locations to rent, from, mm -hmm. you know, farmer locations. Yeah. And I found one. Uh, it was a dairy farm. And um, we negotiated a lease. We signed an actual lease. And then shortly after, 
the owner of that dairy farm, uh, he was uh, speculating on real estate, and there was a huge drop uh, in 91. And he basically walked away from his investment, and um, the property was foreclosed upon. And I get a call from the FDIC saying, we're not going to honor your lease, but we'll figure out what your payments would have been and how to, what if we give you a mortgage, FDIC mortgage, oh, okay. direct from the FDIC, and uh, basically what you're going to pay for rent, you can own the place. I so, mean, that's the- <laughs> as you know, Marlon Brando would say, they made me an offer I couldn't no. refuse. So I bought the farm, literally, yeah. but it was only five and a half acres. You know, okay, yeah, speeding that's... up, you know, making the clock further down is um, I had to rent 20 acres of parking, which is a great yeah. problem to have, by the yeah, way. That's not the word. I remember a friend of mine, uh, he when he was younger there in Connecticut, northern Connecticut, we had this thing called the Woodstock Fair. Right. And every every Labor Day weekend, it was like the biggest thing. It was sure. huge, big agricultural, a big agricultural, like a state fair. But in in uh, New England, they tend to be more localized because it's such a farming area. And I remember my friend had a chance, uh, his father um, had a chance to buy certain farmland that is now where the fairgrounds are, and it would have been all the parking. And I guess the people that own that land with the parking are like mega millionaires now because they are basically the ones that make all of the money from the parking in the field. And so, yeah, like owning parking struck, like it's unbelievably We couldn't operate without the parking. Yeah. And and then the farmer was quite astute, you know, he... Small. Made a nice profit as it, but you know what? You share the wealth when you're in a small town, especially. You want everyone having an, an opportunity to to make a gain. One of the things I think that that separates you from something like a, a Universal or a Knotts or something like that, because they are their own attractions, and they're there. And you know, I love Universal and I love Knotts. I love them both very much, but like they're their own thing. They're the destination and they're like, well, you're lucky to have us. It's right. kind of that energy there is like, oh, we're part of the reason. But like you were the reason people just would come to Berlin at all. And and from what I what I garnered from my experiences growing up is that you guys were very big on cycling into the community and making sure that the community benefited from your existence as well not just uh, vice versa we bought local the local lumber yard would send a full trailer truck full of lumber once a week as we were restoring various buildings that were on the grounds we shopped local for all the supplies we entertained local in all the local restaurants we supported those restaurants the local gas station the hotels we would fill up by tagging them on our, our website, which was kind of new back in those days, oh, yeah, 1991. Right. But we actually, you know, really gave back to the community. In P.S., at the time, you know, you didn't have Craigslist to hire from. So you put ads in the local we'll papers. That, yeah. Well, I only advertised initially, uh, you know, the first round at the local general store in Berlin, Massachusetts. Oh, really? Because we just wanted to offer just the locals first the opportunity. And let me tell you something, you know, here's Berlin, 2,000 people uh, population, and, you know, we hired 400 people every yeah, year. 20% of the so, population you know, of Berlin uh, was working. A big chunk of it. If we would exceed the population, oh, geez, uh, you know, yeah. on our front yard every, every yeah, night. Yeah, the, so the that, goers, you know, yeah. Yeah, that was phenomenal. The, yeah, because that's before you, you got into the Worcester, Worcester Telegram even. Like yeah, the, we the, eventually the local, got, yeah, yeah, we eventually, you know, spread out, you know, to other newspapers. But again, local still to the community. Yeah. yeah. I think that's, that's really huge to make yourself, it's a very smart move to make yourself sort of uh, a linchpin of the community and to be involved and to sort of share the wealth right. literally to literally share the wealth right and i know you know uh, not to get too deep into it because obviously i don't want to like just narrate the entire documentary and oh this, no, but, like, no it's, you know obviously there's there, so much to there, this there is a yeah. lot of hand wringing that's going to come when you're you know your people you know people Halloween, you know, New England is, there's some fanatics, uh, it, both in the horror genre and in the religion genre. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say that as, as sure. nicely as I possibly exactly. can. So working in the horror oeuvre 
uh, it must have been you, a, a lot of kickback from certain fundamentalist Christians and things like that that might have really had a problem. Well, that's where the controversy comes in. Everyone looks at it from the outside and says, you know, boy, these people are making millions for one month. They don't realize it's 12 months a year. Yeah. They don't realize the controversy, what we, the hoops that we had to go through because you have certain individuals, you have, you know, the purest community. I mean, I, just I look back on every level, every day we were, you know, thrown curveballs. Yeah. The historic society is saying that our graveyard is a, you know, sacred Indian burial ground. We have to close you down. The building inspector, in, in this, I'm speeding up the clock, uh, just out of the blue, a week before we open, tells us we have to install a sprinkler system. And we already had our occupancy permits. It, yeah. You know, there is a political uprising, a, right. a small group, uh, the building inspector, the uh, acting fire chief, and a couple of other individuals who want to see Spooky World closed. They don't want this activity like in the town. Anywhere. And so it was politically motivated. They were kind of jealous of uh, some of the town's officials working at Spooky World, and they weren't getting their share. And so as a result, uh, they, you know, they closed down a number of buildings, which forced us to look for a new location, which that's how we wound yeah. up in Foxborough. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah you, I mean, you ended up in, a, in an interesting spot. Yeah, and, I gave you one of the top uh, controversies, but there's all kinds of little controversies. There are. That, and, they, and a lot of them are tied to the celebrities, which makes this movie so fascinating. Yeah, because I'm, I'm going to talk about the celebrities oh in a second, God, because yeah. this is this is very, oh, very it's interesting. it's crazy. Um, one of the things, before we get into that, uh, if you are listening to the show, if this is the first time you're listening to, and you're listening to it for free, hey, thank you. I appreciate your ears and your attention so much. However, if this is not your first episode and uh, you are uh, listening on the Patreon, thank you kind of a little bit more. Uh, I appreciate that. If you go to patreon.com slash Jeff May and sign up for the producer tier, which I am still running at a very affordable rate, uh, I can, I'll can say your name. That's it. I'll just say your name on here. David and I. David, I'm going to read these names off to you of my fantastic producers. We can talk about them. We can interact with them. Some of yeah. them are even prompts that we can talk about. For example, I would like to thank the producer, Aldo. I canceled my dating app subscription to use the money on Patreon Vargas, which is so nice of him. I would like to uh, shout out Bauhaus. 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 I don't... Bauhaus? It works. I would like to shout out Boyd PFDPDJF. Or, I don't really know how we go in here. Shout out to Koi Fam, Art and Mentoring, also a former guest of the show. Um, shout out to Nolan Void, Ricky Cilantro, Big Booty Boy, 42069. <laughs> Maine, more than Stephen King. Did Stephen King ever come to the? No, he never made it. He was yet. invited, but no, no, he never did. Yeah, so close too. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. He did uh, go to uh, Boston Costume regularly, though, oh. with family. Okay, yeah. 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 And meeting Joe. You could have met Joe Hill. Two, uh, two New England horror legends in the same family. Uh, jumping rope, still a sport. Jeff not liking it, still a fact. You're going to get a lot of references about me not liking sports. Long story. Um, bodacious, big, bad, bouncing, bollock, bonanza. Shout out to Jennifer Fendelander. Shout out to at AV Foundry. Patrick Dore. Dore? Dore? Shout out to Bart Fartigan. Shout out to Strange Takes, number 115, The Organ of Doctors Strange. Shout out to Huey, Nerd Numbers, The Return of Magnolia Thunder. I always feel awful when I have to say that name. You're loving that one. <laughs> Shout out to Rudy, Daft Punk as an anime Rueda. Jeff Hates Competitive Fun. Goji, Gregorio is fed up with these new vampire shows movies already. We nailed it with The Lost Boys. You you big Lost Boys fan? Uh, yeah. Did you ever have a Lost Boy show up on there? You know, I I never did. That would have been a fun yeah, crew to have. Yeah, been, yeah. yeah Cor the Corys yeah, yeah, or yeah. any of the Corys would yeah, have been yeah. great. A Haim, a Feldman, who knows? Uh, Odessa Molotov says, topple the patriarchy, get today. Shout out to Gerard Ruane. Shout out to Farty Marty's Nerd Party. Shout out to eat and die, Grand Canyon. You ever been to the Grand Canyon? I have not. I have not either. I have no interest in going. I, I think I'd like to. Would you? Yeah. I feel like when I get there, I'll be like, yeah, that's gonna, what it looks like. I'm going to make some road trips in the in the winter. Do it. Yeah. You might as well. 
Yeah. The Grand Canyon's only what, like nine hours away from us? Yeah, or well, like that? Cindy and I are talking about it, doing a number of road trips in the future. It, right now, it's kind of crazy with the crowd level during the summer. Yeah. But off season, I think is what's the fall hits. I yeah. think is a good time to go. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the same thing. I want to I want to do a little traveling myself, but I don't want to go to the Grand Canyon because it seems boring to me. Uh, show me in the rules where it says a dog can't play basketball. Do you ever have Air Bud at the thing? No. no. Uh, we had a number of Celtics players. Really? Well, all, all the sports teams came. Really? In fact, we even had Drew Bledsoe, Bledsoe at the time. Uh, he was just hot winning all kinds yeah, of... the prequel to Tom oh, Brady. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so we had him uh, on the practice field shooting, uh, you know, throwing a pass and shoved the camera. You know, Tom, you just won the AFC championship. What are you going to do next? I'm going to Spooky World. I love that. We ran that commercial night and day. Oh, oh yeah. It, it was great. That's so cool. Oh, my God. That's so great. That's really cool. Um, gray man of the nightmare potluck. Everyone is welcome at the table. Uh, Jeff using deep blue sea memes to break bad news. Shout out to Tyler Wilgus asking seven. In the time since he changed his name in this document, Jezbutt had a kid, got a new job, and got COVID. And now it's time to change that name because that one's been around for a while, Jez. We'll get you. Kimball, the casual Frankenstein. The target. What's your fa- who's your favorite um, classic universal monster? Well, my favorite all-time horror celebrity would be Vincent Price. Oh. And more so uh, these days because he is my alter ego. He's my yes, guru. Course, yeah. uh, I don't want to give away the secret fair, here, but fair. Vincent Price appears throughout spooktacular that's right because he was there right yeah he he was our inspiration so he's the man behind the oh man that's so cool yeah that that is really yeah he was he was a narrator uh that's so cool yeah that is so cool. and that will be tied to the tv series i like that a lot uh shout out to the target loss prevention officer currently hunting jeff i shoplift m&ms at target don't tell anybody (laughs) there's no reason to i have money it's just i feel like I feel like they owe me. I have M and M's. If you need, I understand. Them. I don't want to steal from you. Okay. You're a small business. I'm going to go after Target. <laughs> they can afford it. Um, shout out to Stephen. Billy ban brioche buns on burgers. Beck. I went on. I went on with that. I hate brioche buns. I hate them. Oh, that's too bad. I, I enjoy them at Aroma like Cafe. I, I don't. Yeah. You know, being diabetic, I, I stay away from bread, but I, I break it when, on a mini brioche at yeah. Aroma Cafe. That's a sweet one too. Shout out to Cody Beck, Mike Gouts, Lisa McCarty at Comics Book Girl, comics with an X and girl with a U. Aeschylus and his tortoise. Shout out to Dr. DNA. Hooray for Pontius Pilate. The scene in Meet Joe Black where Brad Pitt dies. Yeah. I told you there's going to be some weird ones in here. They're out there. I'm never going to have a history podcast, you little sh. So stop asking. Ever since they found out I'm a history teacher, I was a history oh, teacher. Oh, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Mackenzie Sisyphus may be happy, but he's into CrossFit, so f*** him, chill. Instagram and Twitter's at Bob underscore of underscore skull. Sergeant Pepper's hot dog flavored water. Shout out to Lemming Malloy. Norm from Cheers. I would like to sh- extra special shout out to Norm from Cheers because he finds all of the cursing uh, in the episodes and he sends it to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's very fun. Shout out to Burrito Mouth, Dan Hackroyd. As long as we're bringing back Pepsi Blue, let's bring back the Bigfoot from Pizza Hut. My problem is I would never want to go to Pizza Hut. I, Jeff May, believe that there is no better streaming service than Tubi to watch Armand Asante movies. That's probably because there's not a lot of streaming services that carry Armand Asante movies. The Itty Bitty Millie Committee Pity the Fool. Shout out to Kelly says, get your booster, you gaslighting dip turds. Uh, shout out to the guy who played J.J. and Barry Gordy's The Last Dragon. Lisa Harden, my co-producer. I'm going to be going to Star Trek Vegas with her next weekend. Nice. Yeah, I'm very excited about it. Shout out to Jessica Robertson, Silius Ruby, The Digital Phil, The Ghost of Dave Thomas, The Great Radvertising Scam, a Jeff May joint. It's coming. Don't worry. I've been busy. It's coming. Uh, Aaron Meyer, El Seldo would like to thank you, Jeff, for introducing us to your cool friends, such as David Bertolino. In Soviet Russia, we have cool Jeffs. It was me, Jeff. I've been giving you $10 a month since the beginning uh, so you could afford more gas station Pop-Tarts, keeping you sluggish, just slow enough for me to steal Christmas. When you're going on your trips, when you go on road trips and stuff, Mm -hmm. do you have a food that you like to, like a a travel food that you love? It's interesting that you ask. Uh, It's consistently the same things. Those that are sugar-free, low-carb. 
Okay. So I have a low carb uh, keto chip, potato chip. I bring a low carb keto pop tart, uh, and um, there's a sugar free uh, or l- uh, low sugar candy. Uh, like a licorice that yeah. I pack all the time. But then, you know, fruit items like blueberries always oh, yeah. antioxidants and the apples are an easy... I eat like such a dirt bag when I go on road What trip. do you pack? Well, first off, uh, gas station Pop-Tarts. I like Pop-Tarts, but I don't get them at the store. Okay. I have to get them at a gas, gas station. station. Like kind of so blessed. It, in the blue, yeah, yeah. In, the, in the blue packaging instead of the box with the silver packaging because gotcha. I'm a dirt bag. Gotcha. Um, I like pizzeria pretzel combos. Those are those are a tasty treat. I do not eat them unless I'm in a car. Okay. You will never see me eat those outside of a car. Um, so those are my two, my sweet and my savory. Those are the things. And then if I'm going candy, it's going to be like a Reese's Sticks, mm-hmm. which are those like it's like a peanut butter wafer right. little chocolate bar. Uh-huh. I don't know what it is about them, but I just I really like that one. Right. Or a crispy crunchy if you can find it. Yeah. It's like a like kind of like a big fat Reese's Butterfinger thing. Right. But I do. I like road. I like junk food. I'm a junk food junkie, but I try to stay clear of it. I stay away from junk food with the exception of we have five airbnb cottages on our grounds Mm -hmm. and so uh, we purchase snacks and we purchase snack you know we give each you know rotating guest a huge welcome basket you sure do and it's loaded with you know terrible junk food but this is what people want once in a while we'll ask you know all the time we ask would you prefer you know a healthier version and I'm not kidding. It's one out of a hundred that wants the healthier version. <laughs> like, no, I'm on vacation. And so people arriving from Europe or Asia, you know, arriving at midnight, one o'clock in the morning, they devour that huge snack basket. So it's very, and it is huge because I know you can. It's funny because I was just going to say, I, I actually rented um, the Airbnb for my niece and nephew. Yes. Um, they were in town last week. And you put Did out, they like it? They loved it. It's they, like being at a resort. Like they, a, it, Honestly, the reviews we get are five plus. Well, it's so funny because I had mentioned to you because uh, about like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get him some pickles and stuff. And you bought pickles for my nephew. If I, loved, you know, if, if somebody mentions something that they prefer, it's in the basket. It was so nice. We, we had such a fun. You have the best backyard in, in North Hollywood. It, it well, is. it's because, you know, as you know, yeah. we use it for film shoots. Yes, you and do. And that's one of the pluses is because, you know, in the ad of Airbnb, when you're signing the contract, we let you know that there might be an interruption of using the pool possibly two times a week for mm-hmm. a short window of time because we do feature films, TV commercials, and lots and lots of music videos. Yeah. Snoop Dogg, TLC, Trippy Red, Wiz Khalifa. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's so cool. They loved it. We had a blast on the on their last day. We were playing in the pool, and uh, they tried to take they tried to take because you got pirate's booty and um, the sweet potato yeah, chips. Yes, yes. And they were like trying they were trying to pack their bag and uh, they couldn't fit all fit this all stuff. The, yeah. And I looked in there and I was like, "Are you taking pirate's booty on the? Give me that." And I took him. <laughs> and I I'm not kidding you. I you not. We ate those last night. Oh, that's Valerie great. and I ate those last that's night because awesome. we couldn't. We wouldn't let the kids take them. Uh, we let them take all the smaller stuff right. and everything. But we were like, "Don't go! You're not going to pack a bag of chips that is taking valuable space in your in your luggage from all the garbage you bought." You know, we used to go reach out and buy this stuff at local grocery stores. Now, a number of sponsors provided really? because they want celebrities especially to hold the item and get a picture of oh yeah so, that makes sense so you know i'll get you, skid loads God, you know, of this merchandise you know how to do this man you know how to do this right uh okay a couple more um we have cronenberger meister meister burger three jacob trembleys in a trench coat sneaking into an r-rated movie uh shout out to parker Aylesworth is not that tall he has fake legs uh both are true you're tall on those fake legs shout out to christy salinas kale's only true purpose is as the garnish at a 1996 pizza hut buffet there's so much pizza hut references on here mm-hmm. i hate pizza hut oh i like domino's though domino's mm-hmm. really fixed their shit in 2009 i like big mamas big mamas and papas out here is great yeah. they have that they're they're so for those of you that's a very local reference but this is a place where they have a giant rectangle on top of their car because they sell pizzas that are the size of a kitchen table you can't actually when they deliver pizzas 
to these cottages, they have to turn them sideways because they can't get through the doorway. Oh, yeah, right. And a lot of the film shoots that we do, I remember um, Joey Lawrence had, uh, you mentioned Tubi, he shot the movie Swim last year here, Mm -hmm. 11-day shoot in our backyard, and pizzas every day, and they were this huge five-foot pizza. Yeah. And, you know, unbelievable. Massive. Massive. And, And, you know... Everybody, you know, ducks their head into it to take a selfie because it is the largest pizza it served is. in the country. It's so they big. Ha- yeah. They have specialty ovens at each location that can make this pizza. They're quite good. Yeah. I, I did um, pepperoni and ricotta. Mm-hmm. That's the that's what I get with them. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, shout out to at the pajama eye on Instagram for pictures of my feet. It's of strength. Shout out to Verbose Minimalist, world's humblest man. Adam Warlock, he wants your soul. Ass of Bass, the local man, at Gavin underscore not, not with two Ts. Jen, be earnest, enjoy what you love. Nicholas, simply having a wonderful man bun time. It's a reference to the Therese Carotolo episode. Fabian, uh, Gotham City OSHA, Jeff May convinced me to quit Twitter, and you should quit too because it's awful. If I could quit, I would quit Twitter. Um, I don't care for pie. Oh, God, it feels so good to finally get that off my chest. You a pie guy? Or you can't you know, really with the diabetes? Yeah, yeah I was huh? at one time when I was 324 Yeah, maybe pounds. too many pies, yeah. and that's why you're in the spot where you... Yeah. Was that... So the diabetes is type 2, so it was something that you gave yourself? Yeah, yeah well, I had a uh, acute pancreatitis. Oh, geez, uh, yeah. And so that left me a one. Okay. And so I deal with it every day. Uh, you know, it's a pain in the ass. Well, huh? it you know just low blood sugar, high blood sugar. Yeah. It's a pain, but you know I I deal with it. And You're I'm still, still here. alive. <laughs> exactly. They said that I w- would likely not make it, so I'm still. No, you're doing great. Yeah, no. So I've recovered, but I've I've kept off 120 pounds. No, you look great. great. Yeah, when you said you weighed that, you know what was funny is when I watched the documentary. Oh, and I then saw you, the interviews, oh yeah, you'd and see I was it. Like, like, wait, is that not the, the same? Yeah, guy. that's not the same guy. Yeah. Um, uh, Jocular, haggard, cantankerous, fool, vorta spin, and finally, thank you to seismic charge noise. Uh, you guys are all of uh, you. You're my producers, and thank you so much for keeping me alive. Uh, you guys, that means so much to me. If you want to be a producer, head on over to Jeff May, uh, patreon.com slash Jeff May. You can sign up for that producer tier, and then you can uh, put your name in. It's very exciting. Uh, going back to the the backyard that you have, because mm-hmm. we'll, we'll get to the celebrity stuff with, with Spooky World, but I do want to talk about that. Cause sure. It's great. It's a blast. It's so cool what you have there. And um, you have, is it three different spots uh, that you rent out? Five. In the back? So you have five, like, uh, they're like cabanas. Yeah, it's you know, so they're cool. freestanding, so you're yeah. not sharing any walls with anyone. No, it's great. And my... Two biggest clients are Warner and Universal, and they put celebrity guests, directors, producers, uh, those tied to film, those tied to TV. There are a number of celebrities that don't want to walk through a hotel lobby. No. They like the idea of having the pool to themselves. Yeah. And as you know, it was pretty quiet back there. It was, yeah. yeah it's, a, it's a large lot. It's not just a you know, little tiny square. It's very expansive. It, it's a great little area. Yeah. And my uh, and I can't suggest you enough if you guys... Uh, this is weird because I know this isn't a commercial no. for your Airbnb, but if you do ever, <laughs> if you do ever come to Los Angeles, I can't suggest enough maybe staying at this Airbnb because it was great. It was it's a great deal, uh, and you really are an incredible host. Uh, uh, you know, it's funny. A, a lot of people would say, "How far are you from downtown Hollywood? How close are you to the Hollywood sign?" And you know how I address the Hollywood sign yeah, issue. Is it? I bought a Hollywood sign. Yeah, you do. You have a Hollywood a, sign. Illuminated, in the huge six foot letters. And you and you also have the letters. You have sin yes, <laughs> on one of them, and right, I thought exactly. that was really funny too. Yeah. The kids got a kick out of that yeah. as well. Yeah, you have in the room that we were at. You had this um, this massage chair that we were all fighting over because yeah. <laughs> you have this incredible like you put it does like your arms and everything yeah oh it was just a blast yeah. we all we all really love that yeah. so it was and so convenient too when i was trying to get because i'm fl- i flew these kids out and i was footing the bill sure. uh, which <sighs> let me tell you I, having just two kids out for five days oh yeah Cost me about five grand. Yeah, yeah. Um, But, you know, I wanted to do everything that they wanted to do. I owed it to them. Well, you're five, you know, eight minutes to Universal Studios, which is perfect. It is. And and I, I, but I needed them because I was originally going to put them up in the Sheraton or the Hilton at Universal. Three or four hundred a night. I was going to get them a pass. 
and just be like, well, if I have to work or something like that, you guys can just go into the park, blah, 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 you know, give them that option. But then this is half the price. Yeah. And it's bigger than a suite. But the most important thing was I needed them to be near me. Right. Oh, that's true. You're right around the corner. They're, you that know, it's like perfect. one of them is a minor, yeah. you know, and I, and I was like, <laughs> I can't. So if they're universal, it's eight minutes, but eight minutes is a long time. If there's an emergency, mm-hmm. you are a 10 second run from my, from my place. Exactly. And so that to me was, it, you know, it was so perfect where I was like, oh my God, I'll, I'll just, that's great. I'll, I'll rent David's spot. And, and you were so kind and so nice. And I cannot suggest enough that if you are coming to LA, definitely you can message me on the Patreon if you're listening there and you can ask for the, the, the link or whatever, and I'll send it. Perfect. I'll send it to you. Cause I do, I saved it. Because I posted some photos of it and people were like, oh, my God, I have to see that place. <laughs> All my New England friends. Oh, yeah. yeah Cause yeah. I was like, I was like, they're staying at the place of the guy that created Spooky World. <laughs> and like a bunch of my New England friends were like, can you send me the listing for that? That's and funny. I did. And it was great. It was awesome. a lot of fun. Um, so y- you ended up you brought celebrities to central Massachusetts, which is where they don't want to be. In general, but you gave them a reason to want to be there. They had a ball. One of the people, the one of the favorite stories that I have of this, um, and we obviously don't need to set the whole story because obviously it's there. But Linda Blair became a very uh, great with you guys. They, you guys became really, really tight. Yeah, and uh, a great, she's a great friend um, and huge celebrity line. People loved meeting her, and she loved chatting about the various movies. She was in a course, the iconic yeah, the Exorcist, Exorcist yeah. was just phenomenal. In fact, we kind of played to that by bringing in a skid of pea soup during Linda's appearance, and she would sign the can, you make my head spin, Linda Blair. What She had a good sense of humor about it. Oh, obviously. it was wonderful. Yeah, it was very funny. Yeah. Who, were, uh, who were some of the people that were your absolute favorite celebrities to have in? Like the people Alice that you Cooper. loved working with. The Alice most. Cooper would, uh, he just had a fun, and you know, we would play trivia games because he was an Andy Griffith fan. And, and, and in the green room, we would chat forever. And it, yeah. it was a great relationship. He loved playing golf. He Huge absolutely, golfer, yeah. You know, he was the spokesperson for Big Bertha Clubs. He wanted to play, and he asked me to hook him up with good golfers. Well, the first thing I did was I'd call sponsors who were, who weren't sponsors yet, mm-hmm. perhaps, on the verge of signing a sponsorship, but saying, hey, Alice Cooper's coming in October, blah, blah, blah. How would you like to play golf one morning with all of your office staff? Oh, my God. Just sign the sponsorship agreement. We've got it done. Yeah, really. Huh? And so that close the deal for Nestle and Dunkin' Donuts and Pepsi. I, I and- gotta say, and this is a conversation that I was having with Valerie, uh, <laughs> and when we were, she, was, she was like, this place is so great. And I was like, I have never met anybody who's better at knowing how to do a business deal than and, you. And I, you know, I'd love to brag about it, but it just came kind of, you know, it's just natural. You, I think you see the cracks well, and I you mean, get to fill them in. Like you know, you're really like smart the, at it. The deal I had with the Kraft family is that, you know, there was a certain rate I was paying and they got parking fees. But one of the things is they wanted to sell the sponsorships. In the first year I was there, they sold maybe $20,000 worth. So I went back to Robert Kraft and I redid our agreement, paying a higher base rent. But I got the sponsorships back. And the next year, we did a quarter of a million dollars. So, so, so it's really And it went things, up yeah. from there. I think, I think that people will respond, I think, more. It's hard to get sponsorships when it's a billionaire. You know, like it's, <laughs> it's hard to have the Kraft family well, looking you know, for but sponsorships. We put our versus, heart into it. Yes, and of you, course. And you have to kind of, you know, understand yeah. what that person is looking for. You know, I, I, when I pitched Dunkin' Donuts, uh, you know, it was like, oh, we're out of sponsorship money. How about charity money? Yeah. I had one of the office staff in January write to every charity, kids' charity locally, and ask them to put in writing on their letterhead how many tickets they needed for the kids and what the purpose was and why is their charity worthy of that. I took all those letters to Dunkin' Donuts and couldn't get sponsorship money the first year, but they had charity money. So they bought all these tickets for the kids like yeah, courtesy six, of six, Dunkin' Donuts, six yeah. figures, and so as a result, I gave them the sponsorship for free. Perfect. And you know, 
we just you know? relabeled it. Yeah. But, I mean, I just went along, you know, I contoured things to people's needs. It's very smart. It, 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 and it, it was it, fun. It was brilliant. very, very rewarding to do that. It was fun and, um, yeah. yeah, were there, and I don't, I don't know how you know if you're one of these, you, you know, like were there, were there celebrities? You don't have to name names if you don't want to, but were there celebrities that they were one and done where you were like, we can't have this person come back? Like there this was, person wasn't really great for this show. There was two. There were out of maybe uh, how many celebrities? I would say two hundred celebrities really? that we had very during, small during my yeah. tenure. And uh, one I don't want to talk about because he's redeemed himself and he's, you know, wonderful okay. now. Perfect. He's straight and things. But the other one, uh, and I can't mention her name. Yeah. But um, there was a, a serious, serious amount of uh, drug abuse going on. And, I'm sorry uh, to hear that. And yeah, yeah I feel bad. And, yeah. Um, but uh, those are the two people I had to actually fire during oh, really, my yeah. whole tenure. Oh, uh, that's a bummer. This. Yeah. Yeah. And they, uh, um, and so what? The one of them has sort of had a more of a redemption arc. Uh, absolutely. Uh, the other one's still not, uh, not I doing. I haven't too well. followed her. Yeah. Fair yeah. enough. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now, one of the things that you had mentioned, because uh, you had a panel at uh, Midsummer Scream in Long Beach, yes. there was a, uh, a panel for Spooktacular. Yes. I was very happy to see that I am in the trailer. Yes, you are uh, for the documentary. That was a surprise. I didn't know that was happening. Yes. Um, but I was there and we walked there. And one of the things that you mentioned, uh, among a lot of the things that you had mentioned, is that you you basically treated every week, um, every every show week, as if it was like a late night show. Like you would you would sit down with all of the local papers, right? Like they would do on Leno or Letterman or something like exactly. that, and read and say like, what can we do? Um, what can we do that's topical to make it so that it's a different experience every time? The narrator on board the hay wagon, uh, and, which is the longest attraction, it's like 20, 25 minutes length, yeah. where the haunted house attractions, you can go through, you know, 15, minutes, 20 minutes probably. each. You know, there were six of those. And then the museum uh, was probably another 20 or 30 minute experience. But the longest was the hayride trail. And the narrators on board had a wonderful delivery, and they had, you know, a great way to chat about, you know, what they're about to see. But also, we would tie in topics that were, you know, timely. Whatever yeah. was happening in the news that week, we would br tie that into the storyline. And so some were pretty controversial. And the, there is one. The, the, there's one that was very controversial. Okay. Um, and there's one that I, I kind of look at it and I'm like, I, I wonder if, if you were like, that maybe not, might not have been the best idea looking back at how we view that. But it is in what, 1998. Which, oh, oh, okay, I think I, I know. I think you, you have to know that, that, which was the Monica Lewinsky. The, the Monica okay. Lewinsky thing. Yeah, I mean, it was on the news night and day. Um, and uh, the, the press were having a field day with it. So. There's one scene uh, along the Hayride Trail where we have six Leatherface Texas Chainsaw Massacre maniacs attacking the wagon with their chainsaws. And basically, we took those same six people mm -hmm. uh, and put them in, in like French the, berets, the, in business suits. Yeah, the plum kind of colored yeah. suit or whatever. The and uh, they attacked the wagon, but that was the attack of the Chainsaw Lewinsky's. And in the commercial, I believe uh, they they had kind of like a goo coming out of uh, well, their mouth. Well, we don't. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, but it's a part of the history. You <laughs> yeah, know, it is. It, it is. is. But I, I I overstepped my. See, uh, I was wondering like to promote, and uh, you know, I got a little overboard on the P.T. Barnum label. I think it's one of those things too, where I, I think a lot of people look back at the instance and realize that she is, in a way, kind of a victim herself. Yeah. No, you're right. Of, of a man of power but at the time look at you know every jay leno wouldn't stop you know making every every day would be a joke about monica sure. or something like that and and like i think about that a lot because I, i'm sure i was 17 yeah. 16 17 at the time that i was also doing that i overstepped my spot yeah. as, yeah, but, as a promoter there. but yeah, that happens it, it did um, it got us press but i, sure I, I shouldn't have done well, it you had to pull the commercial too. i right? pulled the commercial at, well i was forced to pull the yeah. commercial on most of the stations but then we just voluntarily said let's take it off all the stations yeah i mean that's that's fair yeah i think when you got to zombies with a mouthful of jizz on <laughs> afternoon tv you're probably like yeah that's probably a good I, idea. Yeah, I hope it did but, it uh, yeah it happens <laughs> now uh, i i mentioned i mentioned leno who is a he was a local guy right yeah. he was in like uh like a, 
I forget where he was from. In, uh, Andover. He was from And Andover. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and uh, you actually you worked with him twice. You've been involved with. Him. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I forgot about the second thing. That's right. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, the second thing is very funny. Yeah, the second you thing were... is. Yeah, I was. Um, uh, I was on You Bet Your Life. Yeah. Which is uh, the show that's running uh, syndicated throughout the country. Yeah. And that uh, was like this year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just you know, I wanted to start promoting uh, that we're doing this documentary, and uh, you know, I started getting the word out and we communicated with them and they, they invited me onto the show and uh and it was fun it was yeah. great you know talking Surprise. history with jay and yeah. i've since you know run into him and in the past that you know he's as you know he's local yeah yeah he's him always wearing driving his dumb so cars everywhere yeah. burbank all the time at the comedy club there. yeah so yeah yeah so uh but the first time was um we had tiny tim who was uh, doing uh, a set every night, seven days a week at Spooky World. And, of course, he would end the show with his famous tiptoe through the tulips, and he would throw out plastic... I would buy skid loads of these tulips, and he'd throw them out to the crowd. And, and, and by the way, this stage was immersed right in the middle of the hayride line. Oh, yeah. So, Which is per- a perfect you know, idea, I mean, too. think of all the times you spent in line at Universal, Disney, Knott's, and you're not entertained. Yeah. We built a, a live stage and we'd have a whole show that would, you know, would have Bobby Boris Pickett come out and do a medley of his one hit. He was the from, Monster Mash. He was originally from that yes. area as well, yeah. right? Because I think he, my, he was my friend's uncle. He was my friend. And, he, okay. and my friend was like, he said, like, yeah, he's like, my uncle pays all of his bills. In early December. Right. Because he gets these residual checks from the one song. In the appearances. Yeah. Yeah. And but they all those checks would come in and they, they were funny. massive. Well he owns of you know, he yeah. owns the, the well, he since passed away, but he owns yeah. the publishing rights for that. Yeah. So so you'd have uh, Bobby Boris Pickett, Tiny Tim, and they yeah. would be in the middle of these long it, frustrating lines that are no longer but then, frustrating because exactly. they're in yeah. yeah. And so um you know, as Bruce Valanche would say, David Bertolino is a media whore, and I guess I'll agree with him. <laughs> and uh, I was looking to do, you know, various promotions, and Tiny was interested in marrying uh, his pal Jan. And so I suggested, hey, how about doing it here live at Spooky World? He was okay with that. Well, Go back to Tiny the next night. How about if you did it live at Spooky World, but it's broadcast on Leno? On oh, the Tonight Show. The Tonight Show. Yeah. And previous, you know, like 25 years earlier, 30 years earlier, he married Miss Vicky live on the Tonight Show. It was the most watched broadcast uh, right after the moon landing. Yeah. So it was the second most watched broadcast. Slightly ever. more important than the moon landing. It, it, slightly say, yeah. more. And, uh, and so uh, he agreed. And um, I'm going to speed up, you know, just yeah. for the sense of time here. A day before he's about to get married live on stage, broadcast on The Tonight Show, he comes to my office and says, I can't do it. I'm taking away and disrespecting Mr. Carson. And I said, no, no, I'm sure he wouldn't mind, Tiny. And, oh, no, no, I, I just can't do it. I call up. The Tonight Show, who, which, by the way, is already setting up camera equipment. Yeah. They're already setting up towers. They've got truckloads of stuff out. And I'll tell you what, we're going to talk about in the bonus content, we're going to talk about who the correspondent was on that oh, one. Oh, yeah, so yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll discuss that sure. when we get to that. And so um, I reached the people at The Tonight Show, and they said, don't do anything. Don't make any changes. Let, let me make a phone call. The next thing you know, uh, Tiny calls me and says, uh, okay. I'm okay with doing this. Uh, I'll be there for tomorrow night. And Tiny, what was the change? What happened? He says, well, Mr. Carson called me at my hotel in Marlboro and said, you know, Tiny, go ahead. This is great for your career. You've already made these arrangements. Yeah. Fulfill the obligation. And that's what happened. And millions of people watched Tiny Tim get married. And we're, and we're, yeah. we're going to have some more uh, about that, um, David. So I'm I'm gonna we're gonna finish the episode up real quick. Um, I want to talk about like so what where can we send people to? Like what should we be on the lookout for? 
Um, cause you know, I've got a little well, bit more to talk about and we'll, and we'll move, but like, uh, what about like the documentary for example? Yeah, spectacular, the movie.com. Okay. And that will give you actually there's a, um, a sizzle reel on there that you can watch all the highlights, including that host who, uh, <laughs> was the best man, uh, at the tonight show wedding of tiny Tim. <laughs> and, um, there's other information yeah. on there. You can also follow on Instagram, Spooktacular the movie, one word as yeah. well, if you want to um, get more information from that as well. And that can bring you um, not only to the YouTube, but you can get um, from there as well. Perfect. Um, so now uh, I will also add, too, that uh, I would love uh, if people, if you are coming to L.A., uh, if you do stay here, <laughs> this is the best. It's the best. <laughs> It's the best. It's a little resort. It's the. It's yeah. honestly like I was so I was so relieved to be able to um, to get to, to get the space and the kids when they were like, we, we could, can we come back? <laughs> I was like, you're fly yourself out next time, buddy. But yeah, go for it. You start saving up. Sure. Um, it was a lot of fun. So looking back at at Spooky World and sort of the sort of the long form impact that you had, like how many times. How many times does Spooky World get brought up, like when people find out, for example, like what are the reactions that you get? Oh, it's always a warm and fun. I, I just heard from a major metal group oh, really? uh, who uh, my uh, Boston producer is right. having dinner with tonight. And uh, he just finished a tour with uh, Metallica. In oh, wow. Sellout shows, 100,000 seat uh, stadiums. And this fellow said, I grew up on Spooky World. He says, all of my horror music was based on my experiences, you know, fun there. experiences, more scare factor, the startle factor than blood and gore. Yeah. But his music was influenced, he's telling me. And now he wants to lend that music to, to your a work, possible to work, TV yeah. series. So. I think that's exciting. That that is, and really uh, you know, great. there's just one guy who was influenced that went constantly, and as I mentioned before, John Krasinski as as well. You got me. Uh, you know, he, like uh, we're all there. Damon Poitier, who is in a number of Marvel uh, movies, uh, his oh, first was... acting career, you know, at 18 years old, was working at Spooky World. Yeah, he was a scare actor. I mean, he said that the work he does now was influenced by the job he was offered at Spooky World, and you were. You are an entertainment oasis in a desert of of fun. Uh, you know, we didn't have a lot. And, you know, I, I, I try to stress that a lot to people. And, and the other part of that is like, not only that, but you were a very affordable experience. Sure. It wasn't... It wasn't one of these like, you know, $129. Even now I'm, I'm paying 50 bucks a ticket for kind of weak experiences out, right. out here but it, it, this it, was a whole night out yeah. this was not a five or ten minute haunted house and it's also uh you were in the right place you were you were essentially in the woods it uh, had a natural spooky New England setting in the fall let me tell you something we would go through probably you know 20 gallons of fog fluid a night yeah and uh it probably would have been a hundred gallons of fog fluid, but because of that valley that so, we were yeah. in, it was a natural fogger. Yeah. And you know, it was just crazy looking. Did you, how often did snow hit? You know, once in a while we'd get a, you know, a little, a little bit, yeah. it, 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 more so November when we were yeah. already closed. But I mean, yeah, you'd get a little frost sometimes. It would get chilly. I remember the last, um, Maybe it was the last or like one of the last Halloweens I was home. It was a blizzard. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It went back in like 2011. I'm gonna guess okay. or something like that. Yeah. It was a blizzard. Well, you know, it's funny. Again, I'm not trying to be a big profiteer here about this, but that's the world that no, we're yeah. in. Uh, I would get T-shirts that we would sell. You know, of early course. evening people would buy them. By the end of the night, they were buying the hayride blanket to yeah. wrap themselves around because it got pretty chilly well, at smart. night. Yeah. And the sweatshirts. So our merchandise sales went through the roof as because of the result of the time of year where it was warm and then got chilly. That's, that, see, that's what I want, is I want a spooky world 
uh, sweatshirt. Or I got to tell you something. Yeah, I've seen some of the sweatshirts, the limited edition ones, selling for three or four hundred bucks. I know they're so they're expensive. They're, yeah. You go on eBay and all that spooky world stuff has gone through the roof. Well, because the thing about it is too, and and I I know I have to I have to get you going, and and, and we have to we have to I have to relieve you of of this. But uh, one of the things, and I I stress this like okay, so uh, Halloween Horror Nights and Not Scary Farms, they they had existed, sure. These were theme parks that changed. They changed things up. You were sort of the the major and one of the first to be a theme park that is its own thing. Mm -hmm. That there is no theme park without the horror. Right. Like Disney does, like Universal does, and like Knott's does. Instead, it is you creating something specifically for, not to capitalize, like some of these people are, oh, it's October, we're going to capitalize, but specifically to give, to, I mean, in a way to capitalize, but to give something specifically for a strict, excuse me, group of people. Sure. And that to me is just, it It means so much more when it comes from the from the center of sort of love as opposed to, you know, just, well, we might as well. We all had a passion for what we did. Yeah. And it's yeah. so good. And thank you for that. My pleasure. Um, thank you for that. Um, folks, check out, uh, go uh, on Instagram at, at Spooktacular the Movie, S P O O K T A C U L A R T H E M O V I E. You can also go to spooktacularthemovie.com. Um, see more. Uh, David Bertolino, you are a fascinating person. I'm going to stick you around for some bonus content. Excellent. In there. Um, thank you. For taking the time to talk to me, and I'm happy to be a cool friend. <laughs> you Jeff, are, you Jeff. Are, Jeff does have cool friends. You, I, I do have cool friends. Yeah. You are one of the coolest friends I have. You are the only friend I have that, when I tell people that you're my friend, they go, "Shut the f up." <laughs> it doesn't matter what the celebrities are. It doesn't who, no one cares about it? But when I say the spooky world guy, everyone is like, "Get the." F out of here that's how much of a big deal it is Sweet. that's how big you were to us to my generation in new england you were you were sort of the willy wonka of 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 horror well it's great to be rediscovered now all these years later for the spooktacular documentary i mean it's a the there's no better time you know horror is so mainstream you know the shutter is its own streaming service and horror is this it's this revitalized industry and the fact that you were there and are now sort of coming back and and the 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 memories are coming back for people and new england produces a lot of talent Yes, and so yeah, you know yeah. we all saw that. Um, so David Bertolino, thank you so much. My uh, pleasure, everyone. Feel free to to dive in more about about Spooky Roll because it really is fascinating. Um, thank you all for listening, and again. If you are listening for free, thank you so much. If you want to get early access to uncensored episodes with bonus content, head on over to patreon.com slash Jeff May, Jeff May, J-E-F-F-M-A-Y, one word. Uh, you can also check me out on Gamefully Unemployed at Tom and Jeff Watch Batman, and you can also listen to me on uh, the Unpops Network on Unpopular Opinion, and you don't even like sports, a sports podcast for people who don't like sports. If you are in the Los Angeles area and you want to see me perform live, no better place than Mint on Card at Blast from the Past on beautiful Burbank, California. Uh, you can check that out the second Friday of every month. Next one will be September 9th. And we got one hell of a lineup there. Uh, David, I love you. I'm gonna I have some really back. fun questions about that. And uh, for the rest of you, uh, David, say bye. Bye bye. Bye Thank everyone. You. See ya. Hey everyone, our artwork is created by Justin T. Brown, who can be found at Artness by Justin Brown on Instagram, as well as artnessbyjustinbrown.com. That dope music you heard is by Troy Nababon, available at Troy Nababon on Instagram, as well as at troynababon.com. Nababon is spelled N-A-B-A-B-A-N, and boy, does